Hey guys, my name is GK and in this video I'm going to explain you what are the key roles and responsibilities of a DevOps engineer. So I get this question more often from my students um, and then my fellow friends who, who, um, who are trying to get into DevOps. So the question is like, you know, what what is your, uh, what does, how does your day looks like or what do you do from 9 to 6 as a DevOps engineer? So having worked in DevOps for more than four years and then having taught people I'll share with you guys my experiences and as well as I'll tell you what are the main roles and responsibilities of a typical DevOps engineer. If I have to tell you the main responsibility of a DevOps engineer is to create that CI CD pipeline. So if you think about your company transforming into DevOps, their main goal is to get their code faster to the customers, right? So the expectation from the DevOps engineer when they hire them is to create that pipeline so that, you know, any piece of code in a click of a button should go to production or non-prod or whatever it is. Now, all the roles and responsibilities revolve around the creation of the CI/CD process. Um, and it depends on the maturity of the company where you're trying to join, whether you will be working um, for the creation of the pipeline as a whole or you will be working in some part of the pipeline. Let's say, let's take an, uh, for example, so when you join a company as a DevOps engineer, you know, if you look at the roles and responsibilities of that company, it says like you have to have an experience in Jenkins or SonarCube um, or Git, and then you have to be a strong, you have to be strong developer with Java or any such background. So if you'll understand that the focus they're trying to put on is the continuous integration part. Now let's say, you know, another company has a roles and responsibility of that. You need to have more experience in Terraform, you need to have more experience in Linux, Unix, or maybe one cloud technology like AWS or Google, which means that they are trying to emphasize more on the CD part. So, if you if you take the CI part, your tool you will have the role responsibilities of creating that CI uh, CI pipeline where developers have to integrate their code um, using Git and then Jenkins and bunch of other tools in the whole continuous integration process. Now, if they have a roles and responsibilities of continuous deployment. So their main emphasis would be on the infrastructure side of things. For example, how you can set up a pipeline so that your developers are able to create the infrastructure and as well as deploy the code. Let's take as an example of AWS, right? Now, DevOps with AWS or DevOps with any cloud technology is much easier than doing a DevOps or, or trying to do DevOps on using on-premise servers because you can spin up your infrastructure much faster in, in the cloud technologies. Now, if you take AWS as an example, roles and responsibilities, it will be listed as you should be very strong in Linux, you should be very strong in writing a CloudFormation template, and you should know how to deploy the code using CloudFormation template. Either you should know Ansible or Puppet or any of such configuration management, or maybe um, you should you should do DevOps inside AWS using their native AWS tools. So, one thing about DevOps, if I have to say, is that the reason why it is paid more. It's because of the dynamic nature of it. You know, um, no two companies or no three companies have the same roles and responsibilities. They always keep changing. There are new tools that are coming in the market. If I have to take my example, when I uh, first joined a company as a DevOps engineer, I was into the operation side of things. So I was responsible for working on tools like Puppet, you know, um, OpenShift, and I have to set up the pipeline or you know if once the pipeline is done you have to make sure the deployments are seamless like I've said it all depends on the maturity of the company where the company is if it is starting from fresh you might they might have a they might have a bigger expectations or they might have a lot of expectations or if the company is mature company they might need more DevOps engineers to get all their products or all their applications into this model and they need more engineers to help them to do that and they might already have a framework how to establish that. The bottom line is that, you know, you should always have the pipeline in your mind, how you're going to design that whenever you want to switch to DevOps. You should always think about how you can connect the tools and create that flow in your mind because you can achieve the same result in multiple ways. So that's the beauty of DevOps and, and, and the tools that we have in the market today. I hope this video helped you to understand more like what your day-to-day -day might look like. Um, if not, feel free to comment but thanks for watching guys and then I will come up with more DevOps videos in future. And please subscribe so that you're not going to miss any of my videos. Thank you.